just keep the music playing. We are celebrating this morning. We to give clap offering for our Lord. He is risen today. Amen. Good morning. Did you have a good weekend? Good Friday becomes Friday because it points us to this day. My friends, this is, this is not a, a mere news. This is the greatest news ever. Can you say ever? Christ is alive. Jesus is risen. And there's a good reason to celebrate this morning. Are you okay this morning? Did you enjoy the songs? Choir, you look awesome from here without me standing there kamusta po would you like to shake the hands of those who are beside you right now come on feel the warmth uh, the temperature if they're alive because the word of god is living and active we ought to be alive are you alive are you breathing in and breathing out amen praise the lord i want to talk about or circle around the word change the title of our simple message this morning is embrace the change wow one of the things that doesn't change is change okay the word of god the people whether they are in heaven or somewhere else in hell they will last forever and also change is going to happen every time until the lord will come again and tell us you're done. Come on home. Diba? So, habang nandito tayo, while we are still living on earth, we have this change. And I hope this mighty change will happen this morning. Turn, if you will, to Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 11. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, let's put it to work. Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. And I would be reading some of the parts from verses 7 to 11. Sounds familiar, 7-11, with a big cup. Asking for a thirst quencher. Okay? But you have to pay for it. But here, in Phil UCC, we are free. And overflowing blessings will be given to us through the Word of God. Chapter 3 of the book of Philippians, verses 7 to 11. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. This Apostle Paul uh, saying here, or telling us his words here. Yes, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss for, of all things, and do count them but dung, and that I may win Christ, verse 9, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but which through the faith of, of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith verse 10 and I may know him that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made uh, conformable unto death and verse 11 would say, If by any means I might attain unto resurrection of the dead. Verse 9, I found that I may know him and having mine own... Uh, verse 10, I should say, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Is resurrection powerful? By the way, I'm asking you, is it powerful to your life? Has been powerful to your life? It's being powerful in my life. Kamusta po? Are you uh, an alive person? You have this perspective of resurrection. The choir sang a, a roller coaster of emotions through their songs. The, 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 the fast ones, then goes to the slow ones, and then the fast. Celebrate and then reflect, celebrate. That's how the, the, the resurrection sometimes stirs us in our being. Sometimes we reflect on the love of Christ, seeing Him on the cross, suffering for us. And then don't stop there. There's an empty tomb. The title of the, the, the um, uh, musical is The Tomb is Empty Now. There are people who are wishing to have a revival in their lives. But you know what? Revival doesn't happen tomorrow. It happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus said it is finished and after three woke up. No, no, no. Woke up. 
There's a big problem there. Because people said that trying to, to, to disprove the resurrection that Jesus was only sleeping. No, He didn't sleep. By having that kind of punishment, the crucifixion, death by suffocation, He's actually dead. In the five parts of His body, He cannot live with that kind of one. Ma mapaso nga, eh, matusok lang tayo ng karayom, we say, ouch. What more? His, his back was ripped out of flesh. And finally, he was pierced with this long 20 inches of spear that was invented and intended to just hit the heart and make it stop. And the Word of God said, blood, it's not coming out, but water. It means to say, has been done and he's dead and after that he was buried in a borrowed tomb let me mention the word borrowed why I, I, I think you know it borrowed tomb because he's not going to stay there right because he's, he's just going to to stay there for a while he's not going to stay dead he is going to, to be alive and he said in his word destroy this temple talking about him and after three days I will raise it up again the people of today don't know what Jesus was trying to say but he was talking about himself my friends Jesus came alive he he has a microphone here you go brother thank you I'm just kidding. Jesus is alive and this microphone is alive. Amen. Well, I have a microphone. I can shout whenever I want. <laughs> Embrace the change, my friend. Or the subtitle of our message this morning, There's been a change of plans. Can you say it with me? There's been a change of plans. The devil thought on Saturday that Jesus was dead. Like, mm, done. Woo! Party in hell! Oh, imagine that. Party in hell. Uh-oh. Then Jesus said, actually, in the Bible, He went there. Down there. And might be imagining this time, He said, while being there in the party in hell, saying, there's been a change of plans. It's a matter of time. Friday evening. Woo! Devils! Yeah! Jesus is dead. The Messiah is dead. Woo! Saturday, silent. The disciples were dispersed. They were hiding. Peter, imagine him. Uh, denied Christ three times. And then where, where were there? People around them were gone. And then, imagining this, Jesus told everyone in his economy this the, the, the afterlife he said there's been a change of plans I need to prove something and the, what was proven is his resurrection and Apostle Paul knew the most powerful force in the universe was the power of resurrection it has the power to change lives can you say again change my life is at loss the resurrection is the power to change it are you excited I am excited. You can see it. I'm excited here. I have a microphone and I'm shouting. I'm howling. I'm, wi I'm wishing you can say, Amen. God is alive. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Uh, show me some love, choir. Woo. I want to, to share to you the things that has been changed in the lives of the people around his life when he was living and then this event happened and there were four types of people, four kinds of people I want to share to you. The first change, the resurrection changed some from doubt to devotion. That's our first point this morning. From doubt to devotion. You know what? I'd like to teach you a little bit. You turn your, question, your doubts into questions. That's a proactive uh, effort. If you turn your doubts into question, Jesus 
provides an answer through His work. And we can see here Thomas, poor dude. Thomas, he doubted once and he's called Thomas the Doubter or the Doubting Thomas. Isn't it funny when life <laughs> tells you, uh, uh, names you who you are by one mistake? Diba? Like me, like... Uh, uh, nadapa lang ako and then lampa lampa ako and then, then all, all, your, all your life you'll be known with that single event and when here Thomas doubted and Tom, Thomas was a, was a doubter but resurrection changed him he was a pessimistic pessimistic person if you can see in John chapter 11 the account there he became a mighty witness after the event Jesus had him touch his wounds Put your finger at the hole on my side. And he did. And his doubt was changed to devotion. That's how resurrection can change your life. If you're doubting, believe the resurrection. And you will be devoted to the one who is risen. Are you a doubter like Thomas? The resurrection can change you. The resurrection can change you. And by the way, why do, we, why do we believe the resurrection? Because I have three things here. Because of the empty tomb. Empty tomb. Tomb of Joseph. Borrowed for quite a time. And wasn't used at all. Because Jesus was just there, dead. And then three days after, at the dawn, he was gone. The angel was there and telling the ladies, Ladies, why are you looking for the dead here? He said he will be alive in three days. Did you not understand that? Oh man, masyado kayong uh, hindi nag-focus. Your perspective was not in the Messiah. Your perspective was, uh, uh, your perspective is looking at the human side of the, the holiness and the godliness or the deity of Jesus Christ. After he performed a lot of miracles, after raising Lazarus from the dead, after telling the people that I am the resurrection and life, doubts are filling the place where Jesus was buried. But in Thomas' life, he was changed. The next change, and before that, the greatest evidence that Jesus is the Son of God a son and the son of God and the savior of the world is the empty tomb. Next is because of the eyewitnesses testimony. Lots of people seen him that he was alive. And the third thing because of the extraordinary transformation. Okay, long time ago in the New Testament and after Jesus death, he was raised until now resurrection is being proven by what by whom by what church by failure cc church and all the members that are changed in their lives let me ask you a question is your life changed by jesus and if you are changed by jesus you say amen to that I am changed by God. I am doomed to hell and He snatched me and he, was, he has given me a Jesus encounter and I receive Him as Lord and personal Savior. And now I believe the resurrection. He has the power to forgive sins. He has the power to fulfill all His promises. And the resurrection proves and gives the exclamation point in our gospel story. We sing, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. You know that song, right? Right? From, from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, that's a stop there. From the grave to the sky, he was risen. Lord, I lived. What? Are you dead, people? Lord, let's lift the name of Jesus on high. He is alive. He is alive. Once and for all, he was dead. And once and for all, and still right now and forevermore, he's gonna live. Whether you die, we all live because of Christ's power in us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. Is that a good news? Second thing, the resurrection changed some from fear to faith. Say it. Fear to faith. Who was fearful this uh, um, event when, when Jesus was dead? Saturday morning, the whole day, and then s Friday afternoon or Friday evening. Who were the fearful ones? The disciples. I will not read John chapter 20. It's a long story. 
but the disciples were shut up because of fear they can't do anything they were feared with fear we all know Peter denied Christ because of fear and all the disciples were afraid it's the right human thing to be feeling that time because their Messiah with that kind of level of faith resurrection was not proven yet it's okay to understand that they were f fearful but ang maganda po sa atin ngayon, the story is over sometimes when you're in the story you don't know the end it's hard to understand but the story ended by making by, by seeing Jesus alive in their midst before he went up ascended to heaven the disciples would speak up in faith you know why the day of Pentecost came and preached and they preached Jesus to the entire city of at the temple they preached Jesus in spite of persecution I have seen Jesus is alive he is not dead he is powerful and my gospel the good news that I bring is the power of Christ to save people and right now we celebrate that because you're a Christian right now thanks to the faith of this disciple their fear was changed to faith are you afraid what are you afraid of just focus on the empty tomb that will make you prove that God is with you he will not turn against you he will is with you all the way that's why he's called Emmanuel God with us What's the difference of people who are in fear? There, there's a quotation that I usually tell the people, tell you guys that uh, faith doesn't take the fear away. But faith teaches me how to fight fear. It's okay to be afraid, but make sure you have faith because faith will fight fear. The next thing, the resurrection changed from despair to delight talking about Mary Magdalene Mary Magdalene was very close to Jesus and she was there at the foot of the cross and and she was the the lady that Jesus drove seven demons out of her Mary and the other women supposed supported the ministry of Jesus and the disciples and followed them she follows up she was in despair because Jesus died he's she saw everything but you know what when Jesus came back to life appeared to her she was very smiling up to her ears delighted and that's the thing when you encounter Jesus when you see his goodness in your life you will be joyful are you joyful can you keep your smile like for 15 minutes? Yeah? Show your best smile. Christian ought to smile because they have a risen Lord. Don't be frowning. The happiest people on earth are you. Christians, I like this guy here. He always smiles. I love your smile. He always smiles like, Pastor... The joy of the Lord is our? Maybe, maybe the devil can take away the joy, but your heart cannot be taken away. And your heart is being filled with the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Lord is your strength. So don't, if, if, if you're sad, keep smiling. Keep shining. Knowing that you can count on Him. That's what friends are for. Jesus is our friend. He's even friend for sinners. Friend of sinners. He's, we, we, we sang a while ago, Christ our brother. And the book of Proverbs says, we have a friend that sticks closer than bubble gum. What? Closer than a brother. Her despair changed into delight. Delight. The light. What? Liwanag ng buhay. Masabi ni ate, ano kanina? Magandang buhay. Si ate Josie. Where's ate Josie? Ate Josie, I think she, she has a sign for me when she does that. It's time for me to stop. 
Well, she's not. So, mahap mo magandang buhay na po. The resurrection changed from despair to delight. And the light of Christ is available for us every time. Last but not the least, of course, the resurrection changed from death to life. Meron po sa parts of Bible that the dead in Christ in the Old Testament were risen as the Lord said, it is finished and He breathes His last when He died. All simultaneous things happened. Like the, the temple veil, veil was ripped from top to bottom. It's not like a veil of cortina or piece of cloth. It's inches thick of a temple veil separating the Holy of Holies to the holy place. No one can approach that but a righteous priest. Meaning righteous, he has given himself into confession and he was tied with a rope with a bell and his, uh, his colleagues will, will, when he's into the holy place and his colleagues will not hear a bell, oh, the person, the priest is dead because he is not clean to approach the throne of grace. Well, I tell you, my friend, when Jesus died, the earth shook, the temple bell was ripped from top to bottom, making a good message for us that we can approach God whenever, wherever, however we can because He has given us access to Him. He has given us connection to Him. Dead things in our lives become alive because of Christ's power of resurrection. Those that had died in faith lived again after His resurrection. Jesus is still bringing the dead back to life even today. Not that physical thing that Lazarus had, but He's giving your spiritual death in your spirit life when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Someone can't make it. Someone didn't make it. Buddha can't give life to you. Confucius can't give life. Not even close Muhammad. Moses can't even give you life. Only the name can give us life. And he is alive right now. Let me end with this. There's been a change of plans. We are crossing over. Oh, by the way, Passover was the event. Of the, fe the feast that they were encircled with during the Easter season of that time. Passover because of the Old Testament thing that the angel of death didn't kill the firstborn because of the blood. And that blood is signifying the blood of the Lamb who will take away the sins of the world, Jesus Christ. Passover. Now, we are crossing over. The cross gave us the bridge to transfer from this great divide into here the presence of God. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you don't have the cross, you don't have the access, you don't have the life that He is trying to give you. My friends, you still have a chance to receive the power of resurrection. Four things that has been changed because of resurrection. Doubt turned into what? Are you devoted to Jesus Christ? It's not too late. Fear was changed into do you have faith, my friends? Despair, sadness was changed into delight and death is exchanged to life. Now, are you alive, people? The power of resurrection is the power to change us. The greatest power Ever, The power, this is the power to release us from the bondage of fear. This is the power to relieve us from the burdens and cares. This is the power to revive us from the coldness and hardness of life, of being selfish. It is the power to redeem us from sin and self. Maybe you are hearing me here telling you about the resurrection of Christ and it's just another Easter message. By the way, hindi ko kayo nabati kanina. Happy Easter. I'm going to, to, to greet you. Merry Christmas as well. Because I think for some people, that's, that will be the next time I'll see you. Wag na ma. Wag na ma. Happy Easter. Merry Christmas on an Easter. Wag na ma. I'll see you next Sunday. Amen?
because Jesus is alive. As soon as the tomb had Jesus within it, it had the power of resurrection. Can you clap your hands for that power? It is so powerful. As soon as you have Jesus within you, you have His power. We are all power rangers here. Hindi tayo mighty morphin. We are actually changed into the likeness of Christ. We have the power. I've got the power. Sino yun? Shiman. Shiman? Heman. Okay? Heman. Shiman. Hi. I've got the power. Yes, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, which is the very best event on earth ever. Can you point at yourself like this? Come on. Here in your heart. In your heart. To you say, I have the power. And that power is promised to us whenever we believe that resurrection. I would like to ask you to stand up. As I end. Maybe this time, instead of trying to make a change in your life, you need to just embrace the change that can happen to you instantly if you believe the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross by giving us an empty tomb, a tomb with a view of life. Maybe instead of trying to be a better person, you need to receive the grace of God like only He can give you through Jesus Christ. He came down, lived a life that we couldn't live, died the death that you should have died, and now wants to be born in the hearts, in your hearts, through His power of resurrection. I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads. I'm going to pray for every one of us. Maybe sometimes or there's, there's an, uh, an episode in our life that we have turned away from God, and you know what? God will always reach towards us. There's never a sin that can separate us from God and we need to get back to Him, abide with Him. Nothing is going to be magical in this prayer but the expression of faith as you do it has the power or significance. We will do it all together right now and for the benefit of those who are first time to receive the power of resurrection in their lives. We will say it aloud. Wherever you are, nobody's moving or uh, all standing, closed eyes. Let Jesus have His knocking presence or effort in your heart. In the book of Revelation, He said, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If anyone, including you, hears my voice and opens the door of his heart, I will come in and have, his, have my presence in your house, in your heart. Say it aloud for those who are going to accept the gift of God and for those who want to get back to God. Let us pray together. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I receive the change that you are bringing to my life today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. I believe that He died on the cross for me to be forgiven. I believe He rose from the grave for me to have life. I ask you to change me. I turn from my sins. I give you my heart. Make me a brand new person in Jesus' name. Let me pray. If you prayed that prayer first time or coming back to God, don't feel awkward. Close eyes, bow, bowed heads. It is important to solidify the change that God caused you today. He can change whatever things that are negative to His light. You can't be ashamed of Jesus. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, my, my Father will, will not give the blessings to you. If you're ashamed of me, you should, we should stand for Him. Let the world know and the devil know that God has given us a chance to be a reclaimed child of Him. Are you a child of God? Say Amen. 
and voices will tell you right now, and God knows your heart, He will say, no need to stand, no need to declare. But there is that special blessings in this resurrection Easter Sunday for those who obey immediately. On the count of three, shoot your hands in the air if you prayed your recommitment and receiving of the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today. On three, raise your hands shortly. On two, three. Father, you have seen those hands of people who want to receive you as personal Lord and Savior. And for those who are coming back to you, Lord, you are the God of chances and we still have time to experience the power of resurrection in our lives. Thank you for the empty tomb. It is empty right now. Thank you for the power that lives in us through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the cross. May it remind us of your love and may it remind us of this day that you didn't stay dead and it will cause us to live we can face tomorrow because Jesus lives Father bless these truths in our hearts help us to celebrate the good day the great day of resurrection we pray in the most precious name of Jesus the name above all names the name given under heaven that everybody can be saved if we have faith in him all of us say amen and amen. Take your seats now. Praise God. You may take your seats.